as I do, I now find my vocabulary insufficient to describe my anguish. How may I explain to you my fall from contentment to despair? I was never a loved thing. It was never a condition that I had ever known. Recently, and most fleetingly, I discovered the rapture of that state. Now I know it to have been fiction. My life stretches out before me, and it's now a bitter road. All pleasure is pale now that I have felt love, and may never feel it again. You would say that it was not real love, and I would agree. It was a lie, and it was moonshine, but how happy I was to bathe in its watery glow. Now my mouth is full of ashes. He caused dreams in me where none had thrived before, and I am without hope or consolation. Isabel Brady. No, stay a moment, Isabel. Sit down. I'd rather not, sir. I'm sorry? My, my back cannot sit. You must sit sometimes, surely? Yes, sir, sometimes, but often it's painful and then it's best that I stand. Is it getting worse? By that I mean the degree of the malformation increasingly pronounced. It's been a long time since I looked in the glass, sir, but I imagine so. It feels to be. My clothes twist and pull more. Does that hurt? The pain is not in my back, so it's in my hip. And there's nothing you can do about it. <coughs> Please, may I go now? Of course, as well. No, stay. Tell us about yourself. Excuse me, sir? Tell us about your life. Why would you want to see that? It might be interesting. Armstrong, let her go. It's not. You're a pretty girl, Isabel. Armstrong. I don't suppose anyone's told that before, though, have they, Isabel? Only a blind man or a liar would say such a thing. You think me a liar? I'll not tell you what I think of you. You're a pretty girl, except the fact. I know what I am, sir. I'm a me, a serving girl, a menial, a minion. I'm waiting for you. And many things, sir, that I'm not ready. A general factotum. A slave. A retainer, perhaps. A dog's body. You see, I know 27 words for what I am, sir, and none of them correspond to pretty. I do wish you'd take me seriously, Isabel. I believe you're making fun of me, sir. I swear on my life, I'm not. And I would ask you to stop. Wow. It's like I can't persuade you, I do wish I could. Time with that. That's cruel, beyond belief. Not actually. I don't find her plain at all. I find her quite fascinating. Strange little thing, isn't she? I wonder. What? I wonder what caused that heart. Sir, that's all. 
Will you at least accept this small gift from me? Sir, there's no need. A oh, reason not the need, Isabel. Can you wear it? Really, please take it, won't you? So you've used my present. I've never been given a gift before, sir. What? Never? I've never, to my recollection, inspired a material generosity in others. Oh, well, in that case, let this be the first time. Shakespeare's sonnets. Oh, sir, it's most beautiful. I thank you all. Take great care of it. Why, why did you agree to meet me today, Isabel? I don't know, sir. Perhaps it was the novelty. No man's ever asked such a thing of me. Surely that can't be true. What about home, Scotland? Please don't ask me to talk about myself. Why not? I'm unused to answering questions. When I talk about myself, my face feels hot. When I talk about myself, I feel as if I'm lying. Are you? No, not on purpose, but we all lie about ourselves. Do we? We don't mean to, but we do. Do you lie in general? No. Do you? Inconsequentially. So you don't trust me? I do not know you, sir. Don't think so. I would prefer to. My name is Thomas. I know that. What could be my motive other than genuine affection? I don't know, sir. That's what bothers me. You see, I've never inspired an interest in from from men. You must have been wooed from time to time. Yes, once by an old man with a face like a goat. And he must have thought that the fact of my hump cancelled out the fact of his face. <laughs> Will you trust me in time? I cannot say, sir. Nevertheless, your face did light up when I appeared in the hallway. I was not aware of that. No, it did. You gave me a ravishing smile. No, you're most definitely making fun of oh, me. Oh, but the most beautiful, transforming smile, like the sunlight on a face. So please, just stop. These remarks don't make me happy, as you may well believe. They just, they make me confused. Please, sir, don't. You mug me. Please, leave. Very, very well, if that's what you wish. I do hope I haven't offended you. Feeling just ran away with me. <laughs> Maybe, with more. Please, yes, please. Perhaps, I don't know, perhaps. Till tomorrow. I'm taking the liberty of marking a few lines in the table of the body. Page 73. show me thee. He thinks my smile ravishing. He thinks it transforming great. Like sunlight on the glacier. His name's Thomas. Thomas. Beyond anything, 
My nurse through the most wretched agony of a final illness. I cannot say why I behaved as I did. I can only say it was at odds with how I felt. I'm sorry for your loss, sir. Oh, but don't you see, Isabel? I'm beside myself, longing for you. I, I dream of you. Your, your input is stamped my mind and deadly. I, I cannot help myself. Forgive me, I beg of you. And I will go and never trouble you again. <coughs>
Why? <laughs> what, what have I done? 